Oh, dinky do everybody. It's just me, Scotty McClue. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. A quick pop up on Facebook on Friday morning just to say hi and dinky do. Also to discuss with you one or two things about Brexit. Now, there's huge discussion going on about Brexit. I think what happened there, we went into the EU referendum, a little bit like going into the Scottish referendum, and um, we went into it not necessarily with our eyes open. The question I'm asking you this morning is, if you had the opportunity, would you vote differently to how you voted in A, the Scottish referendum and also the Brexit, the EU referendum? Would you do something differently? Because I don't believe that we all had the facts at our disposal at the time. So that's why I popped up just to say to you, would you like the option to change your mind? Because we know that um, the Prime Minister and the government did not not want to leave the EU. And um, we know that Mr. Cameron got off his mark fairly sharply and uh, just left it all. We know that the Brexiteers, um, they uh, sort of panicked and fled. So now, of course, we're kind of left with this mishmash of wanting something that it would appear the country doesn't really believe in. Because remember, the um, chat is, the blanket chat is that overall a country, one country, is leaving the EU. In actual fact, four countries are leaving the EU. So there you are. Good evening, Scotty, from Australia, says Erica. Did you do, Erica? Lovely to have you with us. So four countries are actually leaving the EU. Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. And they're mainly leaving the EU uh, without the full backing of the people. In other words, we're looking at something that we don't particularly want. Then the other side of it is the negotiations. People say, oh, we're negotiating for this and we're negotiating for that, whether it's trade deals or customs union or whatever. But it strikes me uh, as a non-participant observer, right, an NPO, that um, we're negotiating for stuff that we've already got. So what we're trying to do is negotiate a position that we already have. That seems a little bit strange. So there you are. So the government don't want it. The um, prime minister didn't want it. The people don't seem to want it. So rather than press on with it, because as I say, history is absolutely littered with politicians who have decided that um, they didn't want to go back on something they've done. Now, as we know, the present UK government are no strangers. Sorry about the telephones ringing. Very, very busy place. Uh, the present government are no strangers to the whole concept of doing a U-turn. So perhaps it would make absolute sense for them to say, right, let's U-turn. Yeah. What do you think about that? What's your actual feeling? Remember, there's no shame in saying, I thought I was right, but circumstances have changed and I feel now, etc, etc. So there you are. There's a most list about the who's Sean Mercy, Chuck Plunkett's watching, David Gardner. Is that the PM? <laughs> Do you think Scotty McClue would make a good PM? Do you think I would make a good Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? Or a good First Minister of Scotland? Or a good President of the United States of America, my fellow Americans. So there we are. Peter Martin's watching, dinky do. Um, on the phone, says David Gardner. Yes, I was on the phones there. Very, very busy place. Uh, Kevin Whibley is watching. Now, guys, uh, as you know, I don't normally pop up at this time on a Friday, but I thought today I'd just squeeze in an extra pop-up to discuss the whole setup with breakfast, uh, Brexit. <laughs> Nearly said breakfast. Very difficult not to, actually. Because uh, you're kind of used to it. Your mind runs on. All the way from Talk 107, Scotty, says Sean Moore. Fantastic, Sean. That was actually a very good station. These stations needed a chance. Same as Scott FM. 
wonderful, wonderful radio station. It's amazing how when something's really good in this country, it disappears. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, yes, you will, because they need wise there, says Erica. Thank you, Erica. I have wondered if I should venture into politics, but I'm not a party political person, you see. I find all that a little bit too narrow. And I noticed that Sir Teddy Taylor, the um, one-time MP for uh, Glasgow Cathcart, passed away yesterday. And uh, he was a fine fellow in many ways. He was a conservative, but he was a Scot first and foremost. And as he said himself, uh, he didn't just represent the people in the big hoosies. And he was very, very good. Uh, they said he was the whip's nightmare because, uh, you know, he he thought for himself and he spoke um, for himself as well. Uh, on the early Scotty on the beer tonight, says Mark Waddle. Excellent stuff. Good for you. Uh, practice at Speaker's Corner, says Kevin Wibley. Yes, see who turns up. There's been some great people have gone through Speaker's Corner. I can tell you that. Um, back to the Scott FM days. You weren't a fan of the baseball caps. Is that still the case? Yes, it is. I don't think um, I've ever really put a baseball cap on because uh, I would look ridiculous. Uh, so there you are. Uh, oh, Christopher James Matt, down with the Tories. We're not really a political program in that way, James. So we shall have to say um, up with the Tories so they were a program of balance. There you are. Greg Nichols watching, Dinky Doo. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, excellent, Ron Stewart, Dinky Doo. Guys, if you haven't contributed yet and you're in a position to do so, please make a small donation to help the Scotty McClue programs because they're building and building and building and building. I watched um, a national radio station last night on Facebook and they didn't get Zoom the broadcast. Marvellous. There we go. We just had to pop off for a moment there. Uh, I voted Remain and I'm still Remain. I always vote for Scottish independence, says Lynn Finlayson. Yes, although Lynn, I have experienced a right few idiots involved in the Yes movement uh, recently. I had to put up with a tremendous amount of cheek because I was just explaining to them that we need to take the monarchy with us if we're going to be independent and not have any of that Republican chitter-chatter that some people were doing. And of course, they didn't get it. They all started shouting, he's a yin, he's a yin, and all that kind of rubbish. Complete and utter idiots. But then every movement has idiots. So please don't think that I'm getting at the indie movement as having the absolute say on idiots. Uh, Jim McCain's watching. Uh, I miss you smacking down the call heckler, says Sean Moore. Absolutely, Sean, yes. These were the days, I tell you. God save our queen, says Ron Stewart. Absolutely. I do not know a one single genuine Scottish person who is not a big fan of the monarchy to a greater or less extent. Uh, Scotty, do you think we'll get our independence? And do you think Brexit will speed it up? Peter, I'll be quite honest with you. I think Brexit is going to break up Britain because, uh, as I say, it's four countries that are being pulled out of the EU by one so-called uh, master or mistress in this case. And uh, that's really kind of against the will of a lot of the people. I know you say, oh, it was a democratic vote. But you need to look clearly at who voted and for why, because there was a lot of misleading information. There were senior politicians who I think you could say misconstrued the truth at the time of Brexit. I think we're negotiating for something we've already got. So there's all that as well. Um, now, Indy first and then decide about the monarchy, says Lynn Finlayson. No, that won't work, Lynn. The monarchy will need a clear indication of where Scotland's going and what their role will be. Otherwise, it won't happen. Nobody's going to do that. It's a little bit like, um, you know, not paying for something and then afterwards saying, it, oh, it didn't work. So that's why I'm not paying. You know, can't have that. Can't have that. Uh, Scotty, a wee bit of change of subject. Here in Australia, there's a postal vote on same-sex marriage, and it's getting physical, as the former Prime Minister um, got head-butted by a chap who was... I don't want to press Seymour Alley. You'll have to forgive me, because I once lost the broadcast doing that. 
So there we are. I think we are better together, Scotty. In what way, Lee? There is no justification for that. There is no cohesive argument against Scottish independence. Scotland is most certainly not better together, right? I can tell you that categorically. All the facts back that up and bear that out. So Scotland is most certainly not better together with Westminster. There's no doubt about that, right? Uh, and that's why the Labour Party has been kicked into touch. That's why they're in the long grass. That's why they're wandering about in the wilderness, because they betrayed the people. They let the people down. They sent up a former Prime Minister who uh, gave us a lot of nonsense, and then none of it was backed up. And uh, that's what happened there. So you can't take promises from Westminster for Scotland because they do not want Scotland to go because Scotland is financially pivotal to the um, survival, I would say, of the United Kingdom. But the United Kingdom is going to have gone anyway. So there you are. That's going to be broken up if Brexit goes through. And that's a big if because you might have what's called soft Brexit and that is um, equally uh, remaining. That's us remaining. Brian Gallagher's watching Dinky Doo. Uh, I think we're better together also, says Lee. No, I don't think so, Lee. Freedom, says Martin. Yes, absolutely, but there's a lot more to independence than shouting freedom. That's why Scotty McClue is not party political. So there you are. Uh, the wonderful Doogie is watching. Dinky Doo Doogie, lovely to see you with us, of course. And, um, you know, give my regards to uh, Miss H.L. MacDonald. Uh, do you think the votes were fixed, says Sean Moore? I wouldn't go so deeply into conspiracy theory as to say that. No, because when you go down that road, you lose your sense of reason. You see, because I am not party political, I'm able to look at independence purely from an economical point of view, from economics, and uh, right from the suppression of the Macron report right back in the 1970s, right on till now to the media making sure they don't push anything to do with independence. They push stuff to do with keeping the union, right? They should have to declare their interests. Now, the British Broadcasting Corporation, we know they have an interest in keeping the union because they take about 325 million pounds a year from the Scots out of Scotland uh, and take that down to London, 9% of the license fee and then give you back about 3% in programming. They talk about launching another channel. They talk about not allowing the Scottish news at six o'clock. So you have to look at all that and see what's going on. Now, of course, you can say, whoa, bias, bias. But in actual fact, the clue is in the title. They are the British Broadcasting Corporation, set up by Sir John Reith from Glasgow, the Lord Reith. So there we are. Uh, invade Belgium, says Christopher James Mapp. Christopher James Mapp, you're talking complete and utter nonsense. Uh, Alan Mills is watching, Stuart Small. Uh, freedom for Scotland, the monarchy are the biggest benefit cheats. No, you see, they're not benefit cheats at all. They are not taking at all. These words have been put into your head to come out with that. The monarchy have the civil list that employs 1,000 people in the royal household. Most of the royal households belong to the nation. They are national assets. The Queen and Prince Philip and the royal family curate that for us right there's no taking there's no cheating there's no grabbing there's no any of these idiot things that people come out with because they've been brought up filled with hate for the monarchy right the crown is very very important it is our constant it is the head of state prime ministers come and go queens last a lifetime and then when queens or kings go, the queen or king remains. All right? So it's very important. The monarchy costs us 52 pence a year. There is absolutely zero reason not 
to have the monarchy. All right, so there you go. Uh, Scotty, why are you being biased? You said this was a channel of balance. The Tories lied as much as everyone else during Brexit, and the Tories haven't followed through with all the promises either. That's true. But then you could say that when Labour in power, they lied. All right? The only people who we've never had a lie from appear to be the Scottish Government and the Scottish National Party. Now, I'm not party political. I'm just stating a fact. So there we are. I can I see the Queen singing, signing on at the brew. So there we are. Uh, or a medical assessment over the medical centre. No, Angie, because she's working very, very hard at the age of 92 to deliver the head of state's work to us. So there you are. So any attempt to belittle the Queen is just futile. It's just silly. And anybody that belittles the Queen is an actual idiot. I can tell you that categorically now because they don't know what they're talking about so there you are hi angie how's things is wrong uh down with the snp says christopher james map since we're a program of balance i would have to say up with the snp um the royal do the royals do have a lot of workers uh, working for them the royal household erica has over a thousand employees so there you are and the civil list goes to different things all governments lie says Kevin Wibley. Yes, and you know, Kevin, I sometimes wonder why. I've come across this in business. I've said to one or two senior people, well, we'll explain to the nation what's happening. Oh, don't do that. And you think, why not? <laughs> you know, why not? So there we are. And uh, so that's what's going on there. Um, British by birth. Scottish by the grace of God, says Ron Stewart. Well, no, you see, you can't actually be British because there's no such country as Britain. It's an amalgamation of four countries. So you can only be Scottish, English, Northern Irish, or Welsh, right? To say you're British is just a sort of melting pot. I suppose that's like saying you're European. So there we are. Or saying you're a citizen of the universe. Um... No bad, Ron. I've got a sear back the day, says Angie Thompson. Well, Angie, we won't go into that. Your personal life's your own. And uh, David McGowan's watching. Uh, right, fed up hearing this. Hopefully everything turns around for Scotland, says Fiona Reardon. Absolutely, Fiona. I think everybody wishes that. Now, guys, I'm going to have to push off. You'll be very pleased to hear. Sunday night, 10 o'clock sharp here on facebook live get sharing and sharing and sharing share program 48 it's in two parts you will see it come out google the scotty mcclue youtube channel and play in the sunshine you will see when i send all that round to you so there we are the queen could be in line for a 6.5 percent increase in our taxpayer funded income to 45.6 million amounting to 47% increase in the space of just five years. Well, that's probably because the costs have gone up. I know that we're having to uh, renovate the palace because it hasn't been renovated for years and years and years. And the Queen was knighting some people and a big plaster um, mould dropped down from the corner. Uh, take, care, take care, Scotty. Enjoy your weekend, says Erica. You too, Erica. Love to Australia. I say, I hope all goes well. Uh, if you can spare a few quid, gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue, paypal.me forward slash scotty mcclue, all one word. Both are available at the Scotty McClue website, wwwscotty mcluecom If you think Scotty McClue has been entertaining me for 40 years, uh, or for 25 years, I should say, probably if we take in the radio, and uh, it's certainly worth putting two pounds into the goodies. Do that, please, please. Uh, have a good day, Scotty. May the sun shine on you today. It was nice hearing your points, as always, says Kevin. Thank you, do, Kevin. Lovely to hear you. On Monday morning for me, says Erica. Erica, Monday morning, 10 o'clock sharp, UK time. You sort that out for us and have a gorgeous weekend. Everybody, we'll catch up later. Keep sharing and sharing and sharing. This is Scotty McClure saying to all of you, dinky-doo.